get them on active stuff. This is your Brunswick Smalley. I nice. love it. I love it. Very short fish. They got lots of weight on them. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Fish in Canada show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Whoa. There it is, boys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to today's Fishing Canada episode. In my honest and humble opinion, I think you're going to really like this one. We're going to go deep into one of my favorite species, the smallmouth bass. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a male for sure. Now, granted, there are some Canadian provinces that don't have the luxury of such a beastly little scrapper. There are, however, quite a few provinces that do. British Columbia, for instance, has an abundance of smallmouth both on the island as well as the mainland. Very short fish. Even Saskatchewan has a small population of smallies in specific waters. Manitoba, although known best for its big walleye, pike, and lake trout, has lots of lakes and rivers just chock full of smallmouth bass. Ontario has smallie lakes from the far reaches of the north all the way to the southernmost portion of the province. Quebec is another Canadian smallmouth hotspot. Ooh, that water's cold. From the mighty St. Lawrence and well into the north, there's no shortage of these feisty critters. Smallmouth bass were first introduced to Nova Scotia in 1942, and finally, New Brunswick Smalley. I love the it. Province of New Brunswick has what just may be the fastest growing population of smallmouth in the nation. You know, it's amazing how these fish have caught on, eh? So, the question is how did they get there? Well, check out what I used to think before I was enlightened. Read about them. They originated out of South Africa. They were not native to anywhere here in North America. And they were brought over by some wealthy sportsmen who, uh, who enjoyed fishing, obviously, in that part of the world and thought, wow, what a great place to bring smallmouth bass. And that's how they did it, with the railway. Now, in doing some in-depth research, I found that the origin of smallmouth bass was, in fact, North America. Without question, this whole Cornwall area is incredible. I love it when that happens. And looking deeper, I discovered the very Ooh. first Canadian distribution of adult smallmouth bass took place in 1873, restricted to Ontario in the Great Lakes and down through the St. Lawrence River. By 1884, in response to public demand and right up to the late 1900s, Smallmouth bass were being stocked throughout Ontario, as well as other parts of Canada, as a cost-effective method of providing food for local fishermen, while also ensuring recreation for tourists. This was done via the railroad system. Phew, at least I had that part right. For this first segment of the show, I'm hitting a classic Northern Ontario body of water, which ironically, or maybe luckily, is located directly adjacent to the CN railway tracks. For the remainder of the show, Pete and I will be hitting a much larger body of water. First off, however, I wanted to fish here to show you how easy it would have been for these trains to make this almost inaccessible spot a drop-off or stocking stop while en route to their final destination. Little smallmouth. Little smallmouth on cranks. This is a lot of fun. Especially in these uh, shallow, whoa, shallow little back lakes. Yeah, little smallmouth. That's tiny. <laughs> there we go. I'm fishing about three feet of water or so. Um, it looks like, one of our cameramen said it looks like a little, uh, man-made lake, and it might very well be, but it's just one of the many lakes that have got smallmouth bass in the northern part of the province, and mainly because of that. And with that is the CN Railway that runs all along the north shore of Lake Superior. It is the apparently the origin of smallmouth bass in this part of the world. And they used, the story goes, 
that they used the railway to disperse bass. They brought them in these uh, big uh, milk containers and they would just dump them over the side of the, the uh, train bed as they approached these small bodies of water and just dump the fish and let them go. And that's why to this day, if you look at a, a map, especially here in Ontario, and you look at all the lakes that, that are intersected by the railway tracks, they all have smallmouth bass. Yes, baby! I think in some of these northern lakes, you could drop, I don't know, a piece of tin foil on a hook to catch them. Is there a place you could buy a lottery ticket somewhere oh, around here? In some cases, the smallmouth bass has been unfortunately considered an invasive species due to its prolific spawn and ability to take over a lake. Its nasty, tenacious attitude and voracious appetite certainly don't help its cause. Once introduced to a lake, they can, and most often do, become the dominant predator. As you fast forward to this day and age, when you find a strongly populated smallmouth lake and you're a smallmouth bass nut, well, you feel like you're in heaven. Come on up, baby, here he comes. Yes, baby! Oh, I love smallmouth. I just love them. Come on, let's get you in the boat and back out again. Nice, nice. Nice little bronze back. On my Ned. Oops, perfect. That's the way you let it go. <laughs> Got that one on a little Ned. I think in some of these northern lakes, you could drop, I don't know, a piece of tin foil on a hook and catch them. They're just so plentiful. And in little lakes like this one in particular, where it is really off the beaten path, uh, they, they get so little pressure that uh, anything looks like food, especially something like Ned. <laughs> I love it. I'll bet you, the viewing audience, believe that Pete and I are the consummate professional television anglers. Hello. Welcome to the Fishing Canada show. You know, the type where rarely a mistake is made. You were coming. Daddy! Right? Give me my bottle. Wrong. In fact, we've had more mishaps than most. It's not always action and that's a wrap. As you'll see here in this next piece, where we accidentally drop a rod and reel combo into the drink. So you know what's going on here. I dropped about a $500 uh, rod and reel over the side of the boat. And we spent the last 45 minutes, an hour, looking for it. There it is right there, oops, sorry. You're locked, Ange. Right there. We found it with the AquaView. Then we used the, uh, the Garmin uh, sonar, put the boat right on top of it, literally on top of it, in 22, 20, 22 feet of water. God, I could have caught it. Oh, yeah, I just saw your spoon. You're right close. You are close to it, bro. And then just started dragging big hooks. <laughs> Lo and behold, we got it. There it is. Got it, boys. Easy. Here it comes. Like yes! <laughs> Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, excellent. We were so excited we saw it in the camera. We didn't even put a waypoint. We said, oh, oh, I have the rods. Try, try and catch it. Try and catch it. And we said, wait, it may be a waypoint just in case we don't get it. That makes the whole day worthwhile right there. That's it. That's what fishing's all about. You can't do stuff like that unless you're out fishing. Let's be honest about it. Is there, there a place we could buy a lottery ticket somewhere oh, around buddy. here? I think we're on fire. I think now. we need to go find happy hour at Ted's. Yes, place. that I agree with. Wait a minute. I take everything back that I said earlier. As you can plainly see, we are consummate professionals. That is right, my good friend Peter. Hey, don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> That's a good fish, too. Another good fish. Yeah. Has he got it in him? That's a big Now, fish. is that just crawling on the bottom? We're in yes. experimental mode. Exactly. <laughs> Through time, Thanks to good fish management, as well as very strong smallmouth bass hatcheries, this scrappy game fish has become prolific. Cool. We've got two of them we're playing with here. Smallmouth bass is now one of the strongest fisheries in the province. Never gonna beat that. How cool is that? Smallie? Yep, Smallie. Yep. On a swim, eh? On a swim bait. That's a good fish too, another good fish. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. He ate it, look at it, he ate it. It's gone, isn't it? Has he got it in him? I don't see it, bud. He's got it in him. <laughs> he ate that swim bait. Wow. It's not a big swim bait, but it's, it's a chunk of plastic. 
That's a big now, fish. Now, is that just crawling on the bottom? I was slowly, yeah, slowly reeling it in so yeah. that the tail was still working. Yeah. Let's get a look at this guy. That is hilarious. I want to see that That's a nice bait. fish. Look at the, look at the size of that fish. That's a huge fish. Look at this swim bait, bud. Gone. Gone. Look at this. He ate it. Look at this. Just inhaled it. That was just so awesome because it tells you that these fish are to so think about experimenting with baits like that. Not big. No. But it's different and it's and it works. When these fish are busting shad, like we've seen these fish busting the last couple of days, what better bait than a swim bait? Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. It's pretty much of a a good little indication. I mean, sure, the bait fish is probably. Some of the bait's probably bigger than this, but a lot of, you got to think about all the minnows out there too, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's opportunistic. a perfect, perfect minnow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. It takes forever to get down with that light head, but I should go to a heavier one. Nice, but yeah. We're just experimenting, just getting started, experimenting. Yeah, I'm throwing Deep. this big, uh, this big cool. glider, I guess it's called, eh, bait? Glide bait, yeah, I think Glide so. bait. Big in Europe. Uh, they're starting to catch on here in North oh, America, God, yeah. but no bill, no lip. It's a sinking bait, big, heavy sinking bait. And uh, we're hoping that these big smallies are on these, these shoals and ledges that we're picking off are, are feeding on big, fat food as opposed to long, slim, slender uh, shad type. And this could be, I mean, this could be a, a perch, could be a walleye, could be just, I mean, the profile is perfect, I think, yeah. for the other small game fish that are in this body of water. And, uh, that's, and we'll that's, that's something we're doing. Now you look at this, what Andrew said about the fat. So this is where, if I get five fish on this and he gets none on that, we we're, go to, we're, we're gonna go all profile gonna, like this. Exactly. If he starts popping them on heavy duty like that, <whistles> bye bye to this guy. And we're going to go fat bait like that too. So we're just trying to experiment now to get things going here first. And we don't want to do the typical, if we don't have to do the drop shotting and all that stuff, we will if we have to. But if we can get them on other stuff, we want to have some fun too. So we try some Carolina rigging. We're going to try and do a bunch of stuff over here. So Bear with us. We're in yes. experimental mode. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. It's fun. Oh, a little smallie Pete. Got him? <laughs> yeah. Nice, nettable, no nettable. Yes. I just saw a flash. That might be nettable. Jump, jump, and we'll show we'll see. Yes! <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. oh, no, oh, that's your bait. I know, that's what I mean, you lost me bait. Yeah. Oh, he's off, good. No. All right, he's off. Ah, oh, God, that's funny. You threw your shad, Jay, your well, trailer. You saw him, right? Yeah. Hey, what can I say? The smallmouth bass is also one of the ultimate masters of escape. You'll never boat them all, folks. This episode's hotspot is a medium-sized hump or shoal on beautiful Rainy Lake. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. Rainy Lake is a fantastic multi-species lake. However, the smallmouth bass population here is second to none, and the fish seem to be getting bigger and bigger. This hotspot is among a series of humps. Although smallies can and will use the smaller adjacent humps, this waypoint is in the largest of the complex. It pretty much always has smallmouth on it. Dragging shad body plastics, bucktail jigs, tube jigs, or of course drop shotting will all produce here. Use our waypoint to get started. Be patient, use your electronics, and move around to find out exactly where the fish are located. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Little walleye. You know that huge jig that I was playing with this morning? The bucktail? Yeah. That's oh cool. my god, look at this thing. That is cool. Walleye. A little walleye. Nice. <laughs> on the swim bait. On the swim bait, like he should be. Yeah, that's so cool. Think I can crane him? I think so. I think so. There he is. Well, you got another walleye? Let's lock it. Yeah, lock that. Okay. Maybe the walleye removed it. <laughs> That'd be cool. This is on that big jig. You know that huge jig that I was playing with this morning? The bucktail? Yeah. No way. Yeah, with a great big no <laughs> swim way. bait on the back of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, this is nuts. I want to see what bit yeah, this. Yeah, whatever eats that thing. 
I've lost Whoa, oh, it's a smallie. <laughs> oh cool. my god, look at this thing. That is cool. Yep. It's wow. right back out there. We're both out in the same area. Wow. All eyes and smallies. We're setting that there. Right, it is. right beside you. Yep. He, is he pretty big? Oh, he's a big swallow, buddy. Hey, he must be to eat that mouthful. Let's see, I can't I haven't seen him yet. Nice. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> Look at that bright orange in his face. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to see what would eat that bait. Yeah, no kidding. Look at him there. <laughs> Look at the weight till you see this load of this mouth. Oh, that's How great. cool is that? Oh, that's, a, that's a mouthful of bright food right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just put that together because like I said earlier on, we're experimenting. I wanted to see what would hit something this gaudy. That is a huge, that's a three quarter ounce lead jig head with a, a, a four, maybe a five inch swim bait attached to it. It's a bucktail jig, basically. <laughs> and look, small boats are hitting it. Uh, oh, that is so cool. That is awesome. I love it. Did he clunk it? Did he smash it? What did oh, he, he smashed it. There was no, and not only did he smash it, but he came back two or three times. Oh, really? Yeah. He didn't like it. <laughs> he, you know what? He probably was mad at it. Yeah, he could be, eh? You know, that is such a nasty looking bait. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> well, as you can see, smallmouth and walleye have adapted very well together. In fact, there are so many combination smallie walleye lakes in Ontario that I'm pretty sure it would be impossible to count them all. And of course, Mr. Bowen, he has to be different. Just kidding, buddy. Got one in. Ooh. Oh, a little deeper. Ooh. Oh, feels good. Feels all right, you know that? That's my now with the wind is well, pulling against Well, the wind, the, the drift, yeah. the whole thing could be a, but it's better than not having that big pull. I, I'm liking it, what, I, what I'm feeling right now. Look at the fish out here, wow. They're Bring stacked. Full, eh? Eh? It's almost like they're sitting here waiting for something to happen. Maybe, to hopefully move they're up. waiting for us. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> See, Ned is over there. Let me know if you need it. I don't think I'm gonna need it for this fish, but I feel the things. He's coming in, Inch. He's coming now. He feels good. Whoa. I mean, he's got some fight to him. Oh, he's there. Look at him. That's a lot of fish down there, buddy. Look, it's, oh, it's, it's a walleye, isn't it? It's a walleye. Oh, my God, buddy. Get him in. Here he comes. Get him in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a oh, ball. <laughs> what a ball. <laughs> oh, nice work. On a swim bait and a hook I said I didn't even Holy like to. Holy mackerel. <laughs> that fish. Wow, what a bonus fish. That is fish. cool, man. Oh my God, buddy! You, yeah, you're gonna need pliers probably to get that. Yeah, look, at, just... look at his cut. <laughs> there we go. You got him. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. On and a that's a bait. perfect food for him. Eh? Yeah. Nice little minnow. Just ow. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, buddy. What a great Off bonus. Off in your noggle. Let's see what I can get. And see you later, brother. Oh, yeah, power down. You powered down, brother? Uh, nice. How cool is that? That, wow. And that's Northern Lakes, right? That's yes. Northern Lakes. You never yeah. know. You never know. I hope you learned a thing or two about the history of smallmouth bass in Canada, as well as here in Ontario. I know I sure did. We truly are blessed. To get to some of Ontario's best smallmouth bass and walleye fishing, we highly recommend Sunset Country Outfitters on Campfire Island on Rainy Lake in the northwest portion of the province. To get there, we drive north on Highway 400 to Highway 69 and then head northwest on Highway 17. We stay on 17 at the Highway 1117 split and then turn onto Highway 102 at Thunder Bay. We then head west on Highway 11 all the way to Sorting Gap Marina in the town of Fort Francis. There's also an alternative launching or pickup point called Five Mile Boat Launch. Once at either launching area, you can be picked up by a camp boat or launch your own rig and take a short boat ride to Sunset Country Outfitters on beautiful Rainy Lake. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, 
dominate the waters. Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. And Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.